may I have the first uh, um, slide? And then uh, I could explain what this water footprint analysis is. Many of you certainly heard about uh, earlier. Uh, next, please. Uh, uh, that we are living on a world, uh, as a world population is using 1.5 world. Uh, so we are uh, living uh, up more, but we have natural resources, uh, earth and uh, resources. Now, this might be uh, true, and certainly true for those countries which live above uh, in, in a very high um, uh, energy-based uh, uh, societies. Uh, and uh, the same way as we have environmental footprint, uh, there was also a, a calculation concept developed called the water footprint calculation, which is an indicator how humans appropriate means use and utilize water. This covers both direct and indirect utilizations, blue, green, and gray waters. This is a distinction. Blue water is what you see in rivers. This is what you may pump out of groundwater. This is a water which is moving uh, due to the gravitational forces and what we can achieve, uh, reach and manage by engineering. It's the green water is what is captured by the plants from precipitation which is uh, stored in the uh, uh, earth as uh, 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 moisture, but not flowing according to the gravity, and taken up again by uh, plants, evaporating and evapotranspiring back into the atmosphere. And this green water is not uh, manageable by engineering means. The maximum you can do is by agricultural uh, or biological means. The green water is not an ex ex uh, uh, an amount of water you might use for whatever activities. It is a kind of dilution component you need after you have used the water and polluted to keep it on a certain um, quality. So it is a kind of provision of water which nature needs to keep in uh, petto uh, to uh, continue the services they are providing. Basically, this can be calculated for a product, for a producer, for a consumer, a geographical unit, city, country, or whatever. It is a very versatile program. And basically, it is nothing else than uh, accounting where water is going to. Next uh, point, please. I am showing uh, next one, please, as uh, this example of the equation. I do not want to go into detail. I'm just saying that there are solid equations how to calculate how much water is needed, for example, to produce a T-shirt, how much water is needed to produce a car, how much water is needed to produce our food. But when we talk about water, we have to come uh, to the very basic principle of the hydrological or water cycle. Next, please, which is showing that we have in the Earth a lot of water, but only a relatively tiny portion is which is uh, revolving in the atmospheric, terrestrial, and marine component of the uh, uh, water uh, circle. And these uh, fluxes are basically only those which we can use uh, sustainably. If we go into the stocks, if we start to uh, uh, desalinate ocean water in large scale, we are entering more and more water into the hydrological cycle. And if we are uh, pumping of fossil groundwater, as it's happening, for example, from the Nubian aquifer in Northern Africa, we are using uh, irreplaceable water. The water which is available for re as renewable resources, blue water and green water, basically, and it is about 113,000 cubic kilometers per annum, you see that much more green water than blue water is available. The water which is with us, but you do not see because these are both the moisture in the air, moisture in the soil, or uh, is uh, captured by plants. Uh, let uh, me, uh, what is, is essential to show that you have this big water cycle when the ocean evaporates, uh, uh, winds carries uh, moisture, precipitates, and then flows back to the ocean. But there is a short circuiting is when the plants capture it, evaporate it back to the atmosphere, and it may intru uh, uh, increase precipitation over the land mass because uh, about uh, 
two thirds of the precipitation we have is coming from water which has been precipitated once. If you take, for example, Eurasia, uh, the water uh, which is precipitating in China is mainly coming from the European part of the uh, Siberian part of Russia as evapotranspired water from the big forest areas there. Next, please. Uh, when we go to see how the water footprint of humanity expressed here in millimeter per year is uh, shown, then you see immediately water footprint is there where there are people, where are economic activities, where most of the people live and consume. However, this picture, and it's many critics of this uh, uh, method already said, that it is rather a shoe size than a footprint if you just see how big the consumption is. The question is, do we have the water available on the same spot to support this water footprint? Let me go to the next one, please. In the next picture, we show a very simple assessment or approximation where the water is. This is how the about 800 millimeter average annual precipitation is distributed in the world. We have, if the precipitation would be uh, uh, uniform, then it would cover 800 millimeter precipitation the whole world. But you see how irregular and how unevenly distributed with major precipitation hotspots in the Amazonian basin in Central Africa and in East and Southeast Asia, whereas several other parts are rather water poor. So if you, uh, 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 if you compare the two previous world maps, then you see that some parts of the world, uh, when uh, it comes to the alarming views that one kilogram of beef is 6,000 cubic meter of water consumed, it could be an outrageous number in a dry zone. And it is basically a so what question if you go and think of the Pantanal area of Brazil, where the cattle stands hot six months in the year, uh, up to its belly in the water. Let me go to the next picture, please, which shows the three components of water, how they are distributed on country size in the green, the blue, and the gray water, and the total water uh, footprint of uh, uh, the three components country wise. And you see a very interesting uh, views, not only, not only that uh, those where people are the water footprint is higher. You see interesting uh, uh, exceptions is like Niger, Niger, uh, Mongolia, and Bolivia are the three countries which have the highest water footprint. In case of Niger, it is a very inefficient agricultural practice when you use maybe a little water, but your product produce is so little that the uh, unit product, uh, uh, the water used for unit product is enormously high. And you see in Mongolia, which has a very excessive uh, uh, but uh, 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 pastoralism-based uh, meat production, it has a very high water footprint, irrespective that is actually a very traditional and probably sustainable uh, way of keeping animals. Otherwise, it would not have survived several thousands of years. Interesting to show that one capita per annum has a 1,385 cubic meter water footprint. You can say that everything that you consume, drink, is added together to uh, 1,385 cubic meter per annum. Uh, <clears throat> let's go further and let's start to uh, uh, analyze what might be wrong. Next, please, with this uh, uh, model. First of all, it is an interesting attempt and very uh, uh, good to uh, sensitize people that everything that we do has a water component, but it is not a standard. It cannot be the standard as there are very serious scientific arguments saying that this is not necessarily uh, an accurate number. For example, uh, you, it considers a complete evapotranspiration in the green water footprint. Uh, it considers water uses. If you take water out of a river and carry it to an agricultural field, all the water which is 
uh, lost in this transfer is considered as consumption, even so it returns to the hydrological cycle without being used. And the uh, gray water component is a kind of simplistic indicator that uh, the water quality is getting worse. Now, it does not take a distinction whether the water is consumed, whether you drink the water or whether you use the water, for example, for baths and the water is re-entering the water cycle. The consequence is that if you take the complete evapotranspiration into account, you come to a conclusion that a cup of coffee, which you might have taken after your lunch, contains 140 liters of water. And it's depending on a geographical location, it can vary between 40 to 310 liters of cup of coffee. I'm not telling you that shame on you if you drink coffee, but let's see the next picture, uh, next please, where you see what I'm saying that taking the complete evapotranspiration into account. This is a scientific uh, uh, assessment that different uh, land covers, uh, how much do they evapotranspirate uh, per annum if water is available. Let's compare the two first entries, rainforest and tropical tree uh, plantations. It means that where you start to grow tropical tree plantations for uh, palm oil, for example, you increase the evapotranspiration, but you cannot take 2,500 millimeter uh, water loss uh, for this in account, because if you would not have do it, it already would have had 1,750. So the water footprint of the uh, human activity is not 2,500, but about 750 millimeter. And this is still a very high number, and I'm not arguing that just take more and more uh, uh, plantations, but if you use this high number, you are coming to uh, numbers which are scientifically not solid and could, uh, next please, uh, could lead to further problems with accepting this uh, water footprint analysis and the numbers and basically can contribute to the uh, um, impression but have been seen in other presentations today that people start to disbelieve what media is telling. Next, please. Uh, next, please. Okay, the second part of the critical comments, the water footprint of a human being is coming from 86% from agricultural production. And I just showed out that this is where the biggest inaccuracies in this concept. We do not distinguish whether it is green water, which would take, if you don't do anything, uh, there would be a native vegetation and it would also use water. So this cannot be uh, forgotten that we are not uh, 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 taking all the water, but we just increase or in certain cases even decrease the water use of a, a plot of land. Uh, the problem that the gray water component is higher than the blue water component means that uh, the biggest problem is not that we use water from rivers and from the aquifers, but that we are polluting this water. And therefore, uh, the limitation and the way to use water could be limited. Because the consequence is that the water quality problem is rather than the water quantity problem is the most serious challenge that we are facing as water resources managers in the 21st century. Let me see my final uh, uh, slide. Next, please. Which shows that uh, uh, this. Uh, Simplifications, especially the gray water use. Next, please. The gray water use uh, uh, as a component uh, is quantifying a quality problem. Next, please. Uh, which means that it is not only uh, not taking into account that the different pollutions may have an over increasing effect because it takes only one the biggest polluting effect, but it suggests that a very antiquated uh, strategy for addressing water quality problems, which is uh, formulated that dilution is a solution to pollution. It is not something we can 
subscribe to in the 21st century. Uh, I mentioned already the dif distinction that uh, uh, the difference and that the evaporated and transpired water is reused uh, maybe even in the same area, maybe in the same time period, certainly in an annual scale. And the water footprint calculation does not reflect the basic difference that we are uh, have to mod manage a hydrological cycle in a renewable flux rather than a finite stock resource. These highly exaggerated numbers, the inaccurate numbers, undermine for, finally the credibility of the intended warning, which is basically valid. We are using water, we are using too much water, we are polluting too much water, but if we are overdoing it, and have an information overkill. And only doomsday scenarios are given. And finally, it rather leads to lethargy and inaction, uh, losing our credibility, and uh, uh, does not mobilize remedial actions and behavioral change. So scientists have an ethical imperative to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, and to uh, refrain from exaggerations and bloated numbers. Thank you very much.